What is up guys, I'm back and thanks to TT Surf in Gulf City Mall, I have this iPad Pro to drop some content on. So if you're looking to get your hands on one and you're from Trinidad, feel free to check them out, I'll leave all the necessary information right below the like button in the description. So on absolute first impression, when I took this thing out of the box, I thought it to be comically huge, like seriously this thing is crazy big and it doesn't help that the icon grid is still 4x5 on this size of display. It's rocking a 12.9 inch 2048 by 2732 display with a pixel density of around 264 ppi and it looks just as you would expect extremely sharp and crisp. Now even though the size might seem a bit ridiculous, there are definitely advantages to it of course which we'll get to soon. The iPad Pro is so similar to the normal iPad, yet it's so different in a lot of ways, which is why in this video we'll focus on what is different and who the iPad Pro is really geared towards. Using it as just a larger iPad for media consumption would seem like such a waste for what it's capable of and especially for the price tag. But if that was the only reason of being bigger, then I think iPad Plus would have been more of a suitable name. However, they're calling it the iPad Pro and their accessories like the Apple Pencil and Smart Keyboard Cover which enhances the experience. Although I don't have any of those in hand so I can't really make a solid statement on what I think of them. Just like the iPad, we have an aluminum unibody design with that familiar Apple logo at the back, same layout for the camera, same layout for the lightning port and same layout for the power button. However, where things change a bit is due to the fact that it's a blown up iPad, we now have space for a much bigger battery, 10,307 milliamps to be exact, and also instead of a single speaker, we now have four. And in addition to it just being more speakers, they actually have a surprising amount of depth in the sound quality and it's one thing that blew me away about the iPod Pro, in addition to the crazy size of course. Software wise, although I wish it was running OS X or some kind of hybrid between iOS and OS X, iOS X maybe, iOS 9 looks and moves the same as any other iPad. The home screen would look familiar to any iOS user as it's the exact same thing found on every iOS device. But when you dive one level deeper than the home screen is where you start seeing the benefits of the ginormously large screen. Apps have more rows and columns and there's just so much more screen real estate, although a lot of apps just look like blown up versions of the normal iPad app. But this is of course expected and optimizations should be made with updates that I would hope come really soon. The benefits of the larger screen keeps showing itself during the use of the device such as the keyboard being larger, more text being visible while web browsing, and more space when multitasking. All of these add up to a really solid experience and ignoring the fact that it makes the device a bit more tedious to hold for long periods and makes it seem a bit less portable, not just sure if that's me, it makes having a comically large screen not too bad to have. One addition I did enjoy specifically when coming to the keyboard though is the new features and dedicated buttons added to it. We now have bold, italic and underline buttons, undo and redo keys and the ability to press down with two fingers and have more precise control over the cursor placement. What the iPad Pro is definitely not is a computer replacement and the fact that its price gets pretty close to the MacBook Air territory and even the baseline MacBook Pro territory is where the problem lies for me. So who is this really geared to if the price is almost as much as a MacBook Air yet it only runs iOS? I think personally those who rely specifically on the use of the Apple Pencil along with the iPad Pro to get tasks done that they usually wouldn't be able to do this easy such as designers, artists and music composers, they would really appreciate this specific product. If you can afford it however to have as purely a media consumption device, then by all means go right ahead as it's an awesome one at that. So that's pretty much it for this video, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.